Thanks so much. And uh, thank you, everyone, especially our nominees for being on this uh, Zoom call today. Obviously, I wish we were all in person. We normally do these uh, at the office. Uh, this is a sign of the times. Uh, I am proud of the amazing work that Asian Americans do in our district and throughout Central Florida. And so thank you all for being here tonight so that we could recognize uh, so many heroes uh, from the district as part of Asian American Heritage Month. Under the Constitution in Article 1, Section 5, it requires Congress to uh, keep a journal of our proceedings. And there have been different versions of the congressional record going back to uh, the time of our U.S. Constitution in 1789. And it was first published in its modern form around 1873. And the congressional record, it's a chronicle of our nation's history, uh, both our triumphs and our struggles, both the good times and the difficult times. And I have no doubt generations will look back and see the great debates we're having right now, for instance, as our country grapples with uh, recovering from COVID-19 uh, and uh, doing all that we can uh, to help out so many Americans who are either suffering from the disease or out of work. And during this time period, as we debate other issues, they're also gonna be able to read about your stories. Your life stories are now part of the congressional record, part of our shared American history. The most rewarding thing about tonight is the stories that you'll hear about, about so many amazing Asian Americans doing incredible work uh, throughout Central Florida. And each of yours is a remarkable and well-deserving story to be recognized in the uh, congressional official record. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention briefly, we've seen a terrible rise in hate crimes against the Asian American community in our country. And as we go into this, I just wanna say, we stand absolutely with you all and will not tolerate any discrimination in Central Florida or throughout the country. And it's as a result of these injustices that it's even more important that we highlight and celebrate Asian American History Month and we highlight the amazing work that you all are doing in the district. And we're going to now go into the portion of our program to discuss the uh, various bios of so many impressive folks. Uh, first, I'd like to honor Pauline Ho. Is uh, Ms. Pauline Ho on the line? Yes, I am. Feel free to unmute and we're going to give you a chance to to say hello in a, in, a, in a few minutes. Thanks for being on the line. Ms. Pauline Ho is a U.S. certified public accountant in both Florida and Washington, as well as a U.K. chartered accountant. Besides having a bachelor's of science in accounting from Hong Kong, her hometown, Pauline has obtained a master's degree in administration from Andrews University of Michigan and a master's degree in accounting from the University of Central Florida. In 2008, she founded Laos Consulting Services LLC, a company providing accounting, payroll, tax, and consulting services to small businesses. During the COVID-19 pandemic, she proactively seeks to assist her clients by helping them navigate loans and secure financial assistance during this challenging time. Pauline is highly active in local communities as well. She is the former president of the Chinese American Association of Central Florida, vice president to both finance, of both finance and business development committees of the Asian American Federation of Florida in Central Florida, and board of directors member at Florida Symphony Youth Orchestra. Furthermore, Pauline actively holds the positions of advisor of the Chinese School of CAACF, auditor and past 
Scholastic Award Chair of the Asian American Heritage Council of Central Florida, Chair of REACH of Central Florida, which is a high school nonprofit organization dedicated to serving the local communities, Board of Director of Mills 50, Board of Director of the Sharing Center, Board of Director of the United States, excuse me, of the United Against Poverty, and CPA of numerous nonprofit organizations for this incredible community involvement for Asian American Heritage Month. Ms. Pauline Ho, we honor you. Thank you so much. A round of Thank applause. You. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, um, if you wouldn't mind saying a few words. Um, Congressman uh, uh, Darren Soto, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just okay. fine. I'll hear you just okay. fine. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm honored to receive the award from uh, your office, and uh, I, I'm so proud of uh, being Asian American um, in, in the U.S. that have the free uh, freedoms and everything. So I'm very proud of this, and thank you so much for the award. My honor. Another round of applause. Thank you. Congratulations. Next, for Asian American Heritage Month, we would like to honor Mr. Simon Choi. Do we have Mr. Choi on the line? Oh, yes, I see you there. Yes, sir, I'm here. Good Thank evening. You so much. Good evening. Mr. Simon Choi was born and raised in Southeast Asia in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, as the eldest child of three. At the age of 11, he made up his mind to come to America, fascinated by the culture and opportunities the country had to offer. He firmly believes that America has so much to offer to those that are willing to explore new territories without any boundaries. Unafraid to break tradition, he left the only life he knew and flew to America to continue his undergraduate and graduate studies. Simon earned an undergraduate degree in finance and computer science and a graduate degree in systems management. Currently, he's working at the Tupperware Brands corporate headquarters in Orlando, Florida, uh, one of the largest companies headquartered in the district, by the way as Vice President of Human Resources Worldwide. He has been with Tupperware Brands for over 19 years and has held progressive and high impact positions at the company. Prior to Tupperware Brands, he worked in the high-tech telecommunication, healthcare and hospitality industries. Simon's passion is developing and mentoring others to help improve and change their lives. During his free time, he works with various organizations to serve and help people, especially young people, to build their confidence. He is very active in the local community, volunteering in various nonprofit organizations like the Junior Achievement, Salvation Army, and the United Way. Simon is also active in the business community. He is currently the president elect of the Asian American Chamber of Commerce. Simon is married to his best friend, Belinda, for 30 years and has three beautiful children, Samantha, Samuel, and Spencer. And for that, Mr. Simon Choi, we honor you. And if you wouldn't mind saying a few words, we'd be honored to have it. Yes, thank you, uh, Congress, Congressman uh, Soto. This is uh, such an honor to be recognized uh, during this Heritage Month. Um, Great to be an American, uh, great to be an Asian, great to be serving the community. Community, and this is something that uh, I'll forever uh, remember in my uh, in one of my chapter of my life. So thank you so much for this uh, recognition. I'm so honored, and uh, I'm here to continue to serve. Thank you. Thanks, and we appreciate Tupperware continuing to make higher paying jobs in the Central Florida area. So keep up the great work. Thank you, sir. You bet. Next, in honor of Asian American History Month, we would like to honor Dr. Meher 
Ramatula. Born in East Pakistan, Dr. Meher Ramatula grew up on a farmhouse surrounded by coconut trees, cattle, goats, and poultry. Growing up, she watched her mother volunteer much of her time to those in need and became inspired to seek a profession in which she could do the same. While studying medicine at Dow Medical University in Karachi, she donated blood frequently to the patients who could not afford care. She also worked to transport patients from her village to the university hospital in order to be treated by her professors during her clinical rotations. As a medical officer, she volunteered treatment to impoverished patients with TB using her own meager salary and enforced a practice of supervising patients receiving their medication to ensure that they took it. Although she didn't know it at the time, this method was actually the now famous directly observed therap therapy practice, which was made the standard practice for TB treatment by the World Health Organization. She moved to America right after getting married in 1988 and soon thereafter prepared for the United States Medical Licensing Exam. After passing, she completed her first year residency training at St. John's Mercy in St. Louis, an affiliate of the St. Louis University. In her second and third year of residency, she moved to serve in internal medicine at Orlando Health in Orlando, Florida. After almost 25 years in pra into practice and having received certific certifications as a diplomat from the American Board of Internal Medicine, Dr. Ramatula continues to practice as well as volunteer her time at Shepherd's Hope Clinic for economically disadvantaged patients and serves as an honorary member of the local school board at Muslim Academy of Greater Orlando. She has also served as chairman of the credentials committee at Osceola Regional Hospital in Kissimmee, Florida. And particularly during this difficult pandemic, we are so very grateful for our first responders like Dr. Ramatula. And for that, in honor of Asian American History Month, we honor you. Dr. Uh, Ramatula, uh, would you mind saying a few words? Oh, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Congressman Soto. I truly uh, appreciate uh, you honoring me and all the Asian um, contributors with American Asian heritage in this uh, month of um, heritage uh, recognition. I truly, it's truly a driving passion for me to work and help my community and it's an honor to be here today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And thank you for all that you're doing to keep our district healthy. Uh, I know how much courage it takes and we're just so very grateful uh, for all the work you're doing. Uh, thank you so much, doctor. Thank you. In honor of Asian American Heritage Month, we would like to recognize Grandmaster Chan Pui. Grandmaster Chan Pui is one of the leading pioneers in introducing martial arts to the United States. After immigrating to the United States in 1968, he began teaching the Walloon Kung Fu system in Boston, Massachusetts. In 1980, he moved the headquarters of the Walloon system to Orlando, Florida, where he built the first Kung Fu temple in the United States, the Walloon Temple. 
He was the first person to begin the tradition of Chinese New Year celebrations in Central Florida and use these events as an opportunity to educate his community on the Chinese culture. Grandmaster Chan has been featured in magazines and documentaries for his revered style and prowess in the martial arts industry. Most notably, his life is captured in a documentary directed by his daughter titled Pui Chan, Kung Fu Pioneer. Along with this documentation of his work, his skill and prowess are also exemplified through his inductions and several martial arts halls of fame. In addition to his many accolades, Grandmaster Chan has also trained a professional demonstration team that performs at all the major theme parks in Central Florida. Through his philanthropic efforts, he raised over $30,000 for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Recognized and esteemed by many, Grandmaster Chan has been an integral part of contributing to and preserving martial arts knowledge in the world. Of all his endeavors and accomplishments, most important to him is his love for his family, his pride in his students, and his wholehearted practice of his system's motto of integrating respect, kindness, fellowship, and strength in martial arts. In his life, actions, and practice of martial arts, his philosophy is evident. It's not just a job, but a way of life. Uh, Grandmaster Chan, for this reason, during Asian American Heritage Month, we honor you. Would you like to say a few words, please? Okay, go on. Yes. Thank you very much. Today, the thunder storm came with a fire. We just lost power here right before this started. So oh no! Well, we can hear you just fine. That's no power. New house, you now know like children. <laughs> but there's a way. There's a yeah. way. <laughs> Thank you. Everything. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. His, he he wanted me to say a couple words on his behalf. Please. But we are so honored. Um, to uh, have you here with us in our home. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's an honor for him to be recognized during this time. Uh, this is a challenging time for everyone, but this has really offered us a moment of uh, inspiration and joy. And we really want to thank you for that because it's something that's very needed at this time. And, um, yeah, come my gamble. and in addition um, to uh, recognize diversity and celebrate that, we especially appreciate that and he wants to welcome you anytime to the Wallam Temple uh, to come and visit as well so thank you so much thank you thank you I would be honored Grandmaster Pui and I will as we get towards the summer into the fall it should be uh, they they'll allow me to do a few more public engagements we had yes. some for Memorial uh, for Memorial Day over this past week and that was the first in a couple of weeks as they uh, make sure that I'm well enough to go and vote to do the work of the American people. Um, but I will be there eventually. And it's, it's, <laughs> Excellent, yes. Um, yes. It sounds very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it would be an honor to have you there. So we are celebrating yeah. our, for our 40th years. anniversary in Orlando this year. November. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll have a celebration, but if not, we'll have it whenever the time is right. So you know, please invite me to that November, you know, Things are slowly early opening up, so that may work out. So please invite okay, me. Okay, great. <laughs> great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You bet. Thank you. We can give my 50 year anniversary the book. <laughs> so, or you enjoy looking. <laughs> it would be my honor. Thank you for the invitation. It's an incredible you. accomplishment. Thank you thank so much. You. In honor of Asian American Heritage Month, we would like to recognize Mitel Hall. Mitel Hall has 20 years of experience in sustainable development, including working with universities, federal, 
state and local governments and businesses. Her expertise lies in strategic planning, policy development, and implementation of programs that focus on high efficiency, low impact building design and operations, impacting over 50 million square feet of space and through the management of small and multi-million dollar programs. Mital's ability to synthesize the discipline of professional project management with the multifaceted stakeholder intensive process of sustainability has led her to success in some of the largest institutions in Florida. As vice president for Eco Preserve, Mital oversees all programs and strategic direction. Her skill set includes the incorporation of cost effective and sustainable solutions into organizational structure, policy development, energy efficiency program administration, and much more. She is also responsible for helping to create a company environment that embodies social responsibility through decisions that are both tactical and strategic in nature. Her leadership style is distinguished by a team-oriented approach that uses solutions-based strategies paired with a high level of positive morale. Mital is a published author and currently serves as president of the U.S. Green Building Council, Central Florida. She serves on several other boards, including University of Central Florida's India Center, UCF's Global Economic and Environmental Opportunity Center, University of Florida Sustainable Design and Construction, Smart Cities Chair for the Indian American Chamber of Commerce of Central Florida, Airports Council International Sustainability Working Group, ARCP Environmental Impacts Review Committee, and Project Management Institute. She has even served as a United Nations delegate representing Orlando and offering a private sector perspective to sessions. She has also recently been accepted into the National Renewable Energy Lab Energy Executive Program. And for that, Ms. Mitel Hall, we honor you. If you wouldn't mind saying a few words. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Congressman Soto, for the honor. I'm here with my two kids. You can hey. see heads. Yep. <laughs> so I'm really proud to represent our community as an Indian and as a woman um, today, and especially during this time of hardship. And, you know, without the support of the community and through the mentorship throughout my life, you know, I wouldn't have been able to achieve what I have. Um, and I really thank you for honoring the diversity in our community. It's important, and we're big fans of the environment, so keep up the great work. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have a few other honorees who may not be able to be on the call, but we're still going to uh, discuss their amazing bios. Uh, and uh, certainly they'll get a recording of this, and uh, over the next few weeks I'll be reading these uh, on the House floor. They're already in the congressional record. Uh, next, in honor of Asian American Heritage Month, we honor Ching Ka Lao, a native of Hong Kong. Ching Ka Lao has been a resident of Orlando since 1999. In 2005, Mr. Lao and his wife, Shali Wang, first published Asia Trend Magazine, which has become a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization with the mission of strengthening understanding and communication for the local Asian American community. Over many years, Mr. Lau has worked tirelessly together with local volunteers and community leaders to organize enriching cultural events in Central Florida, including the very first annual Dragon Parade in Orlando's Mills 50 District during the Lunar New Year, the Asian Cultural Festival during May, 
and the Asian Cultural Expo in October. These cultural events have helped bridge together thousands of members of the community in sharing the culture of Asia with local Central Florida residents, particularly the youth, and helping to foster pride, inclusion, and diversity. For his work with Asia Trend, Mr. Lau received the Ellison S. Onizuka Humanitarian Award at the 2010 Asian American Chamber of Commerce of Central Florida Golden Dragon Awards. Mr. Lau and Asian Trend work together with many groups of amazing and passionate volunteers who come together to educate, connect, and engage the community in discussions about Asia's history, arts, and culture. Cheng Kao Lau is one of the founders of Charge Dragon Boat Team, the first Asian American team to promote the ancient Chinese sport of dragon boating in the community for team building, unity, and a healthy lifestyle. And for that, Mr. Ching Kao Lao, we honor you. And we'll make sure that his family uh, gets the video uh, for tonight. I believe he's on. Oh, he is. Oh, wonderful. Mr. Lau, the floor is yours. Sorry, we, we, I didn't see you on there. You, you might have got in a little, little later. So the floor is yours, please. You're on mute. We can't hear you. It's on the top right. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. The floor is yours. Happy evening, Congress, uh, Congress Mr. Wu. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Um, this is my honor to receive this award, especially uh, at the Asia Trend and 15th uh, anniversary this year. And uh, thank you for all the support from the uh, sponsors, uh, supporters, volunteers, and the readers. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for everything you're doing. The press is so important, especially nowadays, to keep people informed. So we appreciate all the great work that you're doing to keep our community uh, informed of all the amazing uh, work being done in the Asian American community in Central Florida. Thank you so much. In honor of Asian American Heritage Month, we would like to next honor Dr. Ijaz Gafal. Dr. Ijaz Gafal graduated from Khyber Medical College in Peshawar, Pakistan. After graduation, he completed his residency at North Shore Community Hospital in Forest Hills, New York. Having a long-standing passion for inpatient medicine, Dr. Gaffaw joined a hospitalist group and moved to Orlando. For the last 20 years, he has worked as a hospitalist and was elected by his peers as the chairman of the Department of Medicine at Osceola Regional Medical Center. He would later be elected as the chief of medical staff and would play a critical part in overseeing the rollout of numerous quality improvement and safety projects. Dr. Gaffaw is currently the site director for graduate medical education at Osceola Regional Medical Center and has played a key role in starting the internal medicine residency program at Osceola Regional Medical Center. He's glad to be part of the amazing journey that transformed Osceola Regional Medical Center from a small community hospital to a major teaching facility in Central Florida. And particularly during this time of pandemic, we wanna particularly thank Dr. Kafal for all the work that he's doing on the front lines, uh, caring for our constituents during this very difficult time. I'm not sure if we have Dr. Kafal was able to finally make it on the phone. Uh, do we have Dr. Gafal, are you are you on the phone with us today? I believe he couldn't make it today. Okay. Well, we know a lot of our- Actually, I'm here. You are? Yes. Oh, great. Wonderful. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was on mute, so anyhow. You uh, You're probably busy right now, along with all the doctors we're honoring tonight. The floor is yours. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Congressman. Uh, it's really an honor uh, to be here in a group of such people who have achieved so much in their lives. Uh, I'm very uh, proud 
to be the recipient of this uh, uh, award or whatever you call it. Um, and um, I, I want to thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's our honor and thank you for all the work you're doing at Osceola Regional. You know, that's the closest hospital in my house. So <laughs> wow. I'll be I, I hope I don't, I hope <laughs> I don't get to see you there. <laughs> well, we, we rest assured knowing uh, the great uh, work being done at Osceola Regional and, and many of the amazing hospitals throughout Central Florida. They, you all have really um, been a big part of, uh, of averting what could have been a worse uh, pandemic, uh, at least so far uh, in, uh, in Central Florida. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you. In honor of Asian American Heritage Month, we would like to recognize Dr. Amish M. Parikh. Dr. Amish M. Parikh is a Central Florida native and University of Miami alumni. Dr. Parikh attended medical school at the University of South Florida, completing his residency at Miami's Jackson Memorial Hospital and his cardiology fellowship at the University of Florida Shands Hospital in Jacksonville, Florida. He currently practices cardiology at Premier Cardiology in Maitland, Florida. In addition to being a talented physician, inspired entrepreneur, and a devoted husband and father, Dr. Puri considers meaningful and consistent service to his community a vital responsibility. Dr. Puri is president of Premier Cardiology and serves on the board for the Orange County Medical Society. His long-term leadership involvement with both CAPI, the Central Florida Association of Physicians from the Indian subcontinent, and AAPI, the American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, has taken to a new level when he served as the convention chair for the 33rd AAPI Convention and Scientific Assembly held in Orlando in June 2015. Dr. Parikh prides himself on taking a hands-on approach to positively impacting healthcare and education for children, both as a board member for a gift for teaching and as part of community outreach initiatives addressing childhood obesity and healthy eating programs. He is also a devoted cultural leader in the Indian American community, serving each year as the chair of the official India Day celebration in downtown Orlando, which, is, has, which ha, was recognized by the NBA as the best heritage night in the NBA. In recognition of his ongoing enthusiasm to support arts and culture in Orlando, Dr. Parikh and his wife, Bina, have recently been added to the donor wall at the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts. Blending his skills in heart care with his passion for his community and family, Dr. Parikh is honored to serve and support the Central Florida community through the Parikh Family Fund. And for that, Dr. Amish and Parikh, we honor you. Do we have Dr. Parikh on the phone or on the Zoom? Well, we'll certainly make sure to get the video uh, to uh, his family. And before I close, I wanted to make sure we could get a, a group photo of everybody. Normally we take all these photos with the family and, and it's a real nice affair. And you know, we're gonna take a rain check on that for uh, some of our future events to have you all come by the office uh, as, uh, as the stay-at-home orders uh, are slowly lifted. But in the meantime, um, I think we have, uh, Andrea, can you do the group photo for us? Yes, of course. All right, everybody, best smiles forward. Everybody, well, this is the best photo we're going to have for right now on three. One, Ready? two, three. All right, give me one second to verify. I think we have some last minute guests, so give me one second. We want to get everybody. All right, one more time, everybody. Ready? One, two, three. All right, verifying it. 
gorgeous. Everybody looks beautiful. Thank you so much. We will send that out to everyone, but as we uh, are able to open up our office, uh, Again, there will be other events coming up, and we'll uh, we'll be inviting you all to come by in person. Uh, obviously, we would love to have done this the normal way. Um, we've had uh, um, both our art competition recently, now Asian American Heritage Month, and a scholarship award ceremony where we had to do them over Zoom. And and uh, it's really important, even during uh, this pandemic, to still make sure to take the time to go through the these important events that we do throughout the community. So please accept my rain check to come by the office to take some photos in person as we uh, uh, slowly but surely get back uh, to normal. You know we're, we're getting there slowly but surely when Universal, Disney, and uh, SeaWorld are opening in Central Florida. Uh, and I know we, uh, we obviously are gonna be paying close attention as we get to the fall and beyond. Congress is doing everything we can uh, to to slowly but surely uh, get our country back uh, to normal. And, uh, you know, we heard some amazing stories tonight. We really uh, believe it's important for the history of, of our nation to reflect so many uh, diverse leadership roles. We have leaders of the press, of the business community, leaders in martial arts and in the medical field and then in education, uh, so many amazing uh, folks who are on this line tonight, and I, and I promise you in the very beginning, this, the stories are the most amazing part of this. Uh, just seeing folks traveling halfway across the world, uh, coming either some some of you were born and raised here, others uh, took amazing journeys to get here, and uh, like when I, English is my first language, but yo puedo hablar en español también. I speak in Spanish too, but it's my second language, and. Uh, I know what it's like to have to learn another language on top of it and then that be part of your profession. It's, uh, it takes amazing courage in to um, go through your studies and all, all the things that you've had to do to get these advanced degrees and start these amazing businesses and, and, uh, and work in engineering and in architecture. It's just an incredible and inspiring journey. And, and that's why uh, we uh, wanted to make sure to highlight your stories and make them part of American history. Uh, and I really appreciate my staff. They do a great job of helping us uh, identify all these um, amazing leaders in the community. So one round of applause for my staff for helping put this together. They are the ones who help make uh, all these amazing uh, uh, events happen to highlight all of you, our leaders in our community. And with that, I just want to end by uh, hoping that you all stay healthy and safe. And uh, it's important now more than ever to stay in contact with everyone and to, and to uh, continue to have a strong community. And so I encourage you as you see things coming up that our office is doing, whether it's our town halls or, or other events recognizing uh, those in the community um, or any other events that we may be hosting uh, now and in the future, you're always invited. And uh, please again, accept my rain check to come in person soon so that we can take photos uh, with all the families. That's really a, an important part that, uh, we will definitely uh, do in the future. But thank you again, and thank you to all of uh, the members of our Asian American community for the amazing work you do to make Central Florida a very amazing place. Stay healthy, stay safe, um, bless you all, and uh, please keep in touch. Congratulations, everyone. We'll see each other soon. Thank you so much.